In our previous video, we began studying the water hammer, which occurs in closed pipes during transient conditions. As we saw, it can happen during the closure of a valve, when the closure time is too small, and in pumped lines, when a power failure happens. In these cases, transient heads, or transient pressures, will form along the pipeline. They must be protected against these additional pressures, otherwise they can burst or collapse. We also saw that the magnitude of the transient heads will depend on the velocity of the pressure waves, which we call celerity. In this video, we will show how to calculate it. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Marcus. I am a retired professor of hydraulics. Now, I am a consultant engineer of many companies that deal with hydraulics applied to sanitation works. Pressure waves have the same nature of sound waves, so basically we calculate them using this formula that we have learned in physics. When we're dealing with gases, this is the formula used to find their elasticity modulus. There's a video in this channel about modulus of elasticity. I'll leave its link in the description. Under adiabatic conditions, the key value for the atmospheric air and, in general, for diatomic gases, is equal to 1.4. Let's assume that the absolute atmospheric pressure is equal to 10 to 5 pascals and the specific mass of the air is 1.2 kg per cubic meter. Substituting the values, we find 342 meters per second. This is the value that we usually adopt in our professional practice. Now, let's see what happens with the water. We can assume that the elasticity modulus of water is constant at a given temperature. We can make the same assumption for its specific mass. So we can find the celerity of water at a given temperature, say 20 degrees Celsius. Here is its elasticity modulus and its specific mass. We substitute the values and find 1498 meters per second. It's really fast, isn't it? That's why fish can rapidly note modifications in their aquatic environment. But our problem is to find what happens with the water inside the pipe. The celerity formula changes a little. Now, there's this new term concerning the pipe characteristics because the elasticity of walls will take part in the process. Its thickness will be important as well as its elasticity modulus. Another factor is how the pipeline is anchored. For each one of them, there is a C1 factor that depends on the Poisson coefficient of the material. Let's do an example. Find the celerity of the water inside the pipeline with these characteristics. Here is the elasticity modulus of steel and its Poisson coefficient. This one will be the C1 factor. And now, the water characteristics. This is the elasticity modulus of water, and this is its specific mass. We substitute the values and find this value. It's fast, but not as fast as in the water. Okay, now let's see the case of a PVC pipe filled with water. Here is its elasticity modulus and its Poisson coefficient. This will be the C1 factor. And now, the water characteristics. This is the elasticity modulus of water, and this is its specific mass. We substitute the values and find this value. It's even slower than in the water. So, this is what we have. Celerity is high in water, but not so high in a steel pipe with water, and even lower in a PVC pipe with water, because the walls of the pipe will deform and reduce the velocity of the waves. And that will be all for today. In our next video, we'll talk about the influence of the maneuver time on the water hammer waves. Oh, and if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, comment, share and subscribe. Hit the bell so you can be notified of my next videos.